you can overcome all your challenges. You just need to have the drive to achieve your dream. You need to have a burning desire in you to succeed in your dream. And truly, like the burning desire of the Vatana to flow to the Indian Ocean. It was brought past by a dam we called the Vitalo Dam. It built up to the brokerage and continued. It was later brought by Masinga Dam. It continued. It has been blocked seven times. That's why we call them the Seven Fork Dams. But every time it's blocked, it builds up and then overflows and continues with its journey. The challenges of life will be there, like Tana River has. We do have the patience to build up, like Tana River, to fill the dam and then continue, set it itself free free itself from the blockage. Those are the challenges that we all go through. With the patience and commitment, I assure you, like uh, Libatana, you will overcome your challenges. You will overcome the blockages and you flow to your dreams. You make it to your dreams. I realized um, in 2005, I asked, I have a bank here, how can I be noticed? And I entered a global competition. It was called uh, the Go uh, Global Vision Award Contest. It was people who had the most powerful visions and transformational visions. The contest was in Germany. It was during the G8 summit in 2000 in Germany. We, together with my colleagues, we submitted our application. At the end of the contest, I was named the winner of the Global Mission Award. That is what taught me that there is nothing you can't achieve if you desire it. But the desire to achieve must be stronger than the fear of failure. The desire must be stronger than even the fear of death. I learned a big lesson. So 2012, there was a search for a world entrepreneur. I said, see, I'm an entrepreneur in equity. I went to this contest. I entered the contest. I won the African Entrepreneur of the Year. I felt very, very proud because uh, I beat uh, Nigerians uh, world the known entrepreneur. Who? Eh? Dagote. I did Dagote. I felt, wow! Then I went to Monaco. I was to fight it out with the 56 global winners. Out of 56, 48 flew in their, uh, in their jets to Monaco. Four, making it uh, 52, uh, sailed to Monaco with their uh, hashes. Yes, <coughs> it was really good. I flew KLA, economy class. But after five days of fighting in Tawas, when the announcement was uh, made, it was said, I'm the winner of the world, Ernest and Young, it was Ernest and Young, World Entrepreneur of the Year, is Dr. James Wangi of Kenya. <laughs> I became the first black man or black person, for that matter, to win the Global Entrepreneur. Yeah, you can see it. There yeah, are two seats there. I became <laughs> the World Entrepreneur of the Year. And the story went on. When Financial Times was looking for the top 50 thought leaders in the world, I was named among the top 50 thought leaders 
in the world. When Bloomberg was uh, looking for the 50 most uh, iconic people on that, I was on that list. The, the boy from Nyagatogo village who went to school without shoes. Your circumstances don't define your future. Your future is not a continuation of the past. Your future is the function of your desires. Your future is a function of your commitment. Your future is a function of the drive. The future is a function of your devotion and dedication to your dream. I want to encourage you that whatever dream you have, it can come true. And it will come true if you truly and fairly, fairly believe that you merit it. And you prove that you merit it by working hard. And so we saw it. It's not Abba, not alone. Barack Obama said, Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And truly, he became the first black uh, person to become the president of the Republic uh, of the Amer of United States of America. He opened the window. Since then, we have seen that America has chosen to have a vice president who is black. All of us can open the grass seeds. We can break the grass seeds. Our dreams can. So I want to once again to tell you, yes, you can. I believe in you. But my believing in you is not enough. You must believe in yourself. You must believe in the beauty of your dreams. You must believe in the beauty of your aspirations. It's only then that you acquire the energy to drive yourself to the realization. And that is how we separate our future and our past. We become drivers of our destiny. We become the shapers of our future. And that is how, how the circumstances of the past of yesterday don't become the shapers of the future. That is how we separate ourselves from our circumstances. We are on this scholarship because our circumstances were such that chances we could not have come to high school. But that is the past. We don't need to live in the past. The question is, now that our desire was to get to secondary school, what do we do while in secondary school to guarantee ourselves that we get a place in university? The first one is hard work. There is no substitute for hard work. Nothing has ever achieved without hard work. The second one is discipline. And discipline is a commitment to a set of values. You pick a few values and say, I will live by these values. I will do that which is right before men and before God. Men may not be seen, but God will be seen. So you bear in mind that to live within the constraints of your values. Your values become a true compass that point you to the true north. And every time you ask yourself, is this right or wrong? And the compass of values will tell you, no, that is wrong. And you have the strength and courage not to do what is wrong. And you keep out of trouble. We always get in trouble because of doing the wrong things. If we do the right things, we never get out of trouble. We get, never get in trouble. It's as simple as that. And that is what the safeguards of discipline are. I want to encourage you to do what it takes to, uh, to use this scholarship as a tool of achieving your dreams, separating yourself from the past and neither being in charge of yourself and your future and your destiny to ensure that um, 
your future will not be a continuation of your past. Let me illustrate, say, in each lies the power of one. We don't need to succeed as a crowd. Each of us was created in the image of God. God created us in his own image. God had the power to say, let there be, and there could be. Because we were created in that image, I realized we all have that power. The question is, are we willing to pay the price of achieving our dreams, of unlocking that power? It may be painful, but are you willing to endure the pain? The greatest pain that we all go through is what uh, Professor Makoha talked about earlier on. The pain of delayed gratification. The pain of delaying gratification. Human beings are viewed uh, in an interesting way. We are motivated by two things. Seeking pleasure and avoiding pain. <laughs> Only two things drive human beings the desire to enjoy pressure and the desire to avoid the pain. Those two are the motivations. The desire to see pressure tells you now, now, now. But the, uh, the compass, the true compass tells you the true north is delaying that pressure, delaying the gratification that we derive. It tells you the timing is not right. You are capable, you are competent, but the timing is not right. The question is, are you willing to bear the pain of waiting, delaying the gratification? If you are willing to pay, then life becomes very easy and seamless to live. That ability to delay gratification is what we call discipline. Doing the right thing all the time. Doing the right thing all the time. That's what really our discipline is all about. You do the right thing all the time. When you do the right things, then you are not emotionally driven like an animal. The difference between a human being and an animal is a human being has intelligence to know what is right and what is wrong. Animals have no intelligence. So they seek pressure at all times and by all means. And this consequently, they have no capacity to delay gratification. They avoid pain by all means and seek pressure by all means. And that is when you say you are behaving emotionally. You, you, you are not reasoning. You are just avoiding pain and seeking uh, pressure. It's an emotional instinct that drives you. We, we are intelligent. Let's be rational. Let's listen. What is right and what is wrong for us. That is the only way we distinguish ourselves from animals. That we are rational. We are not on gross emotion. But unfortunately, we are tempted every day because of what uh, Professor Makoha has said. He said, our, the way we are constructed. He said it's neural systems. Is that uh, there is a tendency to be, to operate at the emotional level, the instincts of emotions, other than the instincts of martial reason. Avoid. And that is the biggest accomplishment a human being can have. An elevated awareness, you become aware of what is right and what is wrong. That's why you say that person is highly emotionally intelligent. 
what I, what I see that he has developed his capability or her capacity. In her capacity to be self-conscious and self-aware. Awareness and consciousness helps you to suppress your animal instincts or the emotional uh, instincts and helps you then to rationalize all your decisions. Wise people, when you push an issue to them, they say, hmm, let me sleep over it, let's talk tomorrow. What are they applying for? They're applying for really taking an idea through the motions of uh, validating everything about it. They're just being rational. They want to listen before they come back to you. They are not instinctively responsive to you. If there's anything that will differentiate you, is you developing your capability of awareness and consciousness. And that has nothing to do with age. We assume wisdom has a lot to do with age and experience. No, it's an instinct that you can develop of being aware and conscious that you are not an animal, you are an intelligent human being. You should not be driven completely by desire to seek pressure and desire to avoid the pain. You are willing to pay to endure pain to achieve your objectives. You are willing to pay the price of your dreams, the dreams of working harder than anybody else, the pain of working throughout, the pain of being disciplined, the pain of saying no. That is the price I'm only asking you to pay and to distinguish yourself. And that is what, when codified, is said to be the power of one, the power of instinctive decisions, making the right decision. <laughs>